woman in Pakistan sentenced to death under the country's stringent blasphemy laws. A Christian charity and other legal advocates say that they will appeal the conviction. Former nurse Shagufta Kiran, a mother of four, was also fined $1,000. She is accused of sharing comments on social media that were disrespectful of the Prophet Muhammad. Her lawyers say the Christian woman did not write the content that was later shared in a group called Pure Discussions. And for more, we turn now to Ed Clancy, Outreach Director for Aid to the Church in Need. Ed, always great to have you on the show. So tell us Thank more you. about this incident that led to the blasphemy charge and the death sentence for this woman. Sure. The, the woman, 40 years old, a former nurse, mother of four, was part of a group chat. And uh, part of it, there was a um, little passage that was considered uh, blasphemous to the Prophet Muhammad. And because she interacted and shared it, uh, she was charged, even though the, origin, the original person who posted it hasn't been charged, with violation of 295C, which is the essentially the highest, worst um, uh, blasphemy violation in Pakistan. It requires that she be judged by a Muslim judge uh, under the um, pretense of the Sharia court, and the, the sentence is mandatory death sentence. Mm. So there's no wiggle room in it at all. And of course, the woman being a Christian um, and not being wealthy has very little chance of, of fighting for her, you know, her own justice or true justice. That's really unbelievable, Ed. Has there been any reaction from the international community about this verdict? Not enough. Uh, there has been from, you know, the usual voices, the uh, diocese and the bishop's conference in Pakistan has spoken out. Um, there have been some agencies and some uh, human rights organizations that are speaking out against blasphemy, blasphemy laws in general have said something. Uh, but part of the problem is that uh, in these cases, it, it doesn't really rise up uh, on the, the news highlight level. And because of that, oftentimes, even the people that might be interested in understanding more about this and doing something don't hear about it unless they watch, you know, EWTN or read Catholic uh, National Catholic Register or something like that. Yeah. What about the Vatican? Uh, has the Vatican spoke out about this? Well, there, there is always the, the diplomatic uh, relationships that happen. And so while there hasn't been an explicit statement yet, I, you know, forcefully speaking out in any in any way for her, there is work uh, to do something to help her. So uh, in the past, we have had success, famously with Aja Bibi, uh, in getting her sentence overturned. The only problem is that the wheels of justice or true justice in Pakistan are very slow. Aja Bibi took over eight years to be released from her, you know, wrongful sentence, and then was forced to flee the country. And um, Miss Kiran, Mrs. Kiran, as well, might have to face the same situation. But the first steps are to, to get the appeal and to get the courts to hear it. It's going to have to go to the Supreme Court, and really, for any chance of her getting released. Yeah, and what can we, as Catholics and the faithful, do uh, to help in this situation, if anything at all? Well, first and foremost, you know, prayer has has its effect. It's the, the first and most important thing, in a sense. But then to, to speak up, j just as we are talking about this now, it's not it's not high priority news. But so people have to hear about it, maybe we're mouth to mouth, uh, we're, you know, uh, person to person. And it's important for us to be advocates for these people that have no voice. I mean, they're they're silent. They're less than one percent of the population in Pakistan. And they're under a Muslim majority that will take advantage of them, unfortunately. Yeah, and her story is so significant, but there's also many stories uh, that happen around the world very similar to this. Ed, tell us about something else that you may be, you know, watching right now, another case. Well, again, the, the usual suspects, uh, situation in, in Africa, West Africa, Nigeria, uh, there has been some, unfortunately, some lack of improvements in India. And within two weeks, we'll be releasing our persecuted and forgotten report, which will highlight the situation in 18 countries uh, for Christians and the persecution that they suffer. So it's a, unfortunately a busy time in the church for watching out for Christian persecution. But as we always say, we will do our best to speak for them and to accompany them whenever we can. Yeah, and you absolutely do. Ed, thank you so much for coming on the show and talking about this and for all that you do. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you.